algebra, we are going to repeal 48, which is multiplying binomials. If you recall from uh, our first couple objectives, Mattis, of the unit, a binomial is a two-term expression. So you'll see that all of these, when we get to the actual work, work part, uh, you've got two sets of parentheses and two terms inside of each. Okay. Now, in the last objective, quick review of a monomial times a polynomial. Remember, our, our process was distributing in. Right? We took this 3x, what was on the outside, and we multiplied it by everything inside of the parentheses. 3x times 4x, and then 3x times negative 5. That got us 12x minus 15x. Okay? The next one, 7x got multiplied by the negative 2, got multiplied by the 4x. The last one, 9x squared, everything inside of that second set of parentheses was multiplied by the 9x squared. That's what to distribute means, right? It take what's on the outside and multiply by everything on the inside. Well, when you have two binomials, we're still doing the same thing, okay? We still want to multiply each term in the first set of the parentheses by each term in the second set. But if you're not careful, you try and do too much mentally or there's no process to it, all these lines can get kind of confusing. It's, it's, it's easy when you're going from one term to each other one every single time. But when you've got two terms in each set of parentheses that have to multiply by both terms in the other set, the lines can get a little bit cross-wired. Okay? So the three method, methods that we have, uh, I'm going to show you all three of them. The first one is called foil. The second one is called crab, crab claw. And the third one is the box method. Okay? And so foil is an acronym. Uh, it stands for, well, here, let me write this out first. Let's re rewrite 4x plus 5 and 2x minus 8. And I would kind of do your best to kind of keep this in under the foil heading there because if you go too far over to the right, um, then all your work is going to run into itself, anything like that. But uh, the F in foil stands for first. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the first terms of each set of parentheses together. So the first term in the first set is 4x. We're going to multiply that by the 2x. And what is 4x times 2x? That is 8x squared, because you have two of them, right? 8x squared. The O stands for the outside terms. And as it so happens, that 4x that we started with, not only is it the first term, but it's also the term on the outside. And so that 4x, we've already multiplied by the 2x. Now we're going to go over and multiply by the negative 8. Because negative 8 is also kind of the outside term of that second set. I'm going to uh, make my work a little bit fit here a little bit better. So first, we had 4x times 2x, which was 8x squared. Then our outside terms, we already multiplied the 4x by the 2x. Now we're going to multiply by the negative 8. And 4x times negative 8 is not negative 12, we're 32. multiplying here, negative 32x. Okay? Don't lose that sign. It is a negative 8. So 4 times 4x times a negative 8 will be a negative 32x. And so we've done exactly what we said we were going to do here, right? We've distributed that 4x into both terms in the other set. We multiplied 4x by 2x. And then multiply that 4x by negative 8. We're going to do the same thing with the 5. Okay? We're going to take that 5 and multiply it by each term in the other set of parentheses. And the i stands for inside. Because that 5 is kind of on the inside of our two sets of parentheses. We're going to multiply that 5 by the inside term in the other set, which is 2x. And 5 times 2x equals 10x. And then L for last, the last term in each set, are the constants here. That 5, we already multiplied by the 2x, so now we're going to take that 5 and multiply it by the negative 8. And 5 times negative 8 is negative 40. First, outside, inside, last. Kind of an organized way to multiply each term in one set by each term in the other set. If you do it correctly, then you should get what looks like old man foil smiling back at you. You see it? 
He's got kind of the chin here. Here's a smile. Some ears on either side. A little bit of hair up on the top there. A little nose in the middle. Huh? A little, little, little bit of coil? No, not at all. No, not at all. Oh, tap into the creative side of your brain. Maybe yeah. it'll have nothing there. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. Just looks like a pumpkin. Pumpkin? Sure. That could work. Got the lines there. And so these four terms here, 8x squared, negative 32x, 10x, and negative 40, those are the four terms. Jeffrey, of our of our answer, we're not done yet because now I have to put these four terms together, right? These answers here are all part of our solution. We need to put them in standard form. And if you remember the two steps for standard form, the first one is: Are there any like terms? And then order the terms from greatest to least power. So, are there any like terms that we can combine here? What what are they? Oh, my God. Leon. Uh, 10x and negative 32. Right. The outside, inside, you will always be able to combine when you are multiplying two binomials with an x and a constant. Okay? And what do negative 32x and 10x equal? Negative 22x. Okay? Negative 32 plus 10 is a negative 22x. So our final answer here, putting all these things together, we have 8x squared, we have a negative 22x, and we have a negative 40. 8x squared minus 22x minus 40 is our final answer. We can't go any further, and don't try to go any further. We can't because they are not like terms. Okay, we combined the like terms that we could, and now we put them in greatest to least power order. What do we think? Well, if you're not an old man foil fan, uh, the next method we're going to talk about is the crab claw. Okay? And the crab claw essentially does the same thing. We're going to get the same answer, right? If we don't, that'd be a problem. But it's a different way to organize the multiplying. So again, we're going to write our 4x plus 5 and our 2x minus 8 here. And we're going to take our 4x, and our first multiplication is still going to be 4x times 2x. Okay? Our first multiplication is still going to be 4x times 2x, which is 8x squared. Now in FOIL, we took that 4x, multiplied by the 2x, same way that we did here, and then in foil, we went underneath to make the chin of old man foil. In crab claw, we're going to take the 4x and we're going to go up top again and bring it to the negative 8. We still get negative 32x, right? 4x times negative 8 is still negative 32x. We just went up top instead of down underneath. Okay? Same results, just in process. Right? And then with the 5, we're going to start by multiplying 5 by 2x, just like we did in Old Man Foil. We still get 10, 10x there. And when we multiply 5 by negative 8, we're going to go underneath again. Grandpa! <laughs> See it? That kind of looks like a moon. A moon? That works too. Crescent moon, okay? It's more, more and more fun to say, Grandpa! Then crescent moon. This more. We still get our 8x squared and our negative 32x and our 10x and our negative 40, right? All those products, all those things are still there. We can still combine our negative 32x and our 10x. We're still going to get negative 22x. And when we write all these terms out, we're still going to get 8x squared minus 22x minus 40. So why do we have two different methods? Well, because people's brains work differently, right? Some people, it makes more sense to have that up, up, below, below. Or some people like to wave to old man foil. Okay, you can do it, do, do it either way. 
The important thing is you understand how we got the 8x squared Haley. You understand how we got the negative 22x. You understand how we got the negative 4. Are there questions on that? How we got those terms. Okay. The last one, the box method. Uh, who remembers Punnett squares in science? Kind of. Yeah, tell me how Punnett squares work. Okay. Tell me how they're set up. Like, what? What's the? It's with genetics, right? It's like you, you got this this square, and uh, each part of the square is the result of, or in this case, the product of what's written across the top and down the side, right? Remember this, like dominant recessive gene stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In math, we're going to use a similar idea. We're going to put four x and five across the top, and we're going to put 2x and negative 8 down, down the side. Who's phony looking for? Ooh, uh, no. Um, so we still have our 4x plus 5. We still have our 2x minus 8. But instead of writing it horizontally, we're putting it across and down the side of our box here. Okay? And we all, excuse me, we all already know that we're going to get an 8x squared here. You see where it comes from? This square in our box is the product of the two terms that it intersects with. Right? 4x times 2x gives us 8x squared. And then you go one, one over, you've got the 2x and, and the 5. 2x times 5 gives us 10x. We've seen that before. In the bottom row, 4x and negative 8 gives us negative 32x. Again, we've seen that before. And lastly, our bottom right, our constant there. Cole, can you put that away, please? Our constant there, 5 times negative 8 gives us negative 40. Again, those those four terms keep showing up. This is these are all just different methods to accomplish the same result. One might make perfect sense to you, another might be total gibberish. That's okay. Pick the one, use the one that makes the most sense. Uh, now we look for the like terms we can combine. We already know we can combine this negative 32x and the 10x. That gives us negative 22x, and so our final answer. Just like we've seen in all the other ones, 8x squared minus 22x minus 4. And that are three ways you can multiply binomials. Jack? Yeah, um, on the test, could I just do it in my head? If you can do it in your head, as always, on, on the test, you are welcome to do that. And quite frankly, as you practice this, you probably will start to be able to do pieces of it mentally. Where you've got to be careful, though, because this happens to me from time to time, too, is messing up with the signs. If you're doing stuff mentally, it's very easy to lose negative signs, right? Yeah. Um, so just be careful. Yeah. Just be careful. That's why you're required to show work on, on the homework parts. You kind of get that process. There won't be any homework today. Um, we'll finish this up uh, tomorrow. But okay. Uh, if you uh, like the box, then you know, what all the feet that you know what you're talking about? With binomials that, oh, folks, can okay, ask a pretty good question. He said, with the box, you have to be always be Hey, boys, I'm not done yet. I'm asking Dave's question. Uh, he's asking, will you always be able to simplify di diagonally to the left like this? With binomials that are set up like we're doing in PO48, yes. Okay. Um, last week, there was a batch of Khan Academy due. I didn't check it in because it's Holy Thursday, Long Beach, and weekend, everything like that. So what was due last week on the 6th is due tonight the 13th. It's not going to show up for you unless you click on past assignments and look for it. Okay? So click on past assignments, look for the time that was due on it. That's due tonight. All right, that's all you have, folks. Like, subscribe, all the things.